using an enzyme activity assay for the primary purpose to determine the enzyme activity concentration. That activity concentration is proportional to the enzyme's molar concentration. To make substrate mixtures, you'll need a solution of NADH and pyruvate, which are both solubilized in 50 millimolar phosphate buffer at a pH of 7.2. The stock NADH reagent is kept on ice. That's to ensure that the reagent is fresh during your lab period. However, once you take an aliquot, you may leave the aliquot at room temperature, but be sure to cover it with parafilm to minimize oxidation from the air. The stock pyruvate is kept at room temperature because it's a much more stable molecule. When you're pipetting pyruvate and you're using the serological pipette, be sure to hold the serological pipette at the top when you insert the bulb. When making each of the substrate mixtures needed for your lab, be sure you make them systematically because each substrate mixture should be identical and only vary in the type of sample that you'll be adding later at the spectrophotometer. Once you are done making all the substrate mixtures, cover them with parafilm. Then place your samples on the heating block to incubate them for three minutes at 26 degrees Celsius. You can check to see if the heating block's on if the switch is turned to the left side completely. If it's not set at 26 degrees, ask your TA for assistance. While the samples are incubating, it's a good idea to start making your dilutions. Be sure you use room temperature phosphate buffer and not cold phosphate buffer. Why is it necessary to use room temperature phosphate buffer in your enzyme assays? Cold phosphate buffer may lead to less thermal energy required for your enzyme reaction. Now we're ready to assay our samples at the spectrophotometer. Make sure you check that the UV lamp is on. Also make sure that you check that the temperature control device on the spectrophotometer is also on and set at 26 degrees Celsius. Then select Kinetics Time for the program. The program window should read Kinetics Time Tabulation. Make sure that the spectrophotometer is set under the right method for one cuvette. Now you're ready to blank the spectrophotometer. In this case, the blank is a solvent blank, which is 50 millimolar phosphate buffer. Pour some buffer into a cuvette, place into the spectrophotometer and close the lid. Then drag the arrow down to the left-hand corner of the screen and click on blank. Once that's done, then click on Read Samples. Drag the arrow over to the Start box, but don't click Start. This is just to prepare so that you have no unnecessary delays once your enzyme assay has begun. Because the enzyme assay is so time-dependent, you have to get the steps down just right. Make sure your piston pipette is set to the right volume, and that your tips, substrate mixture, vortex, empty cuvette, and sample are all within an organized and easily accessible location. Then, place a tip on your piston pipette and lay it on the bench. Remove the parafilm off of the substrate mixture, and now you're ready for the dance. Check the piston pipette's volume again, take up some sample, watch the volume carefully for any bubbles or leaks. As soon as you add it to the substrate mixture, the enzyme assay will begin. You must immediately vortex, then carefully pour it into the empty cuvette. Place the cuvette into the spectrophotometer in the right orientation, close the lid and wait three seconds, and click start. Notice how the steps took about 10 to 15 seconds. If you are using an enzyme concentration that works in the optimal range for this enzyme assay, that should be plenty of time. For the introductory labs and your lab practical. You want to let the program run the full two minutes or 120 seconds. When that's done, then click on the rates menu. The rates screen has two windows. The top window is for setting the rate, which utilizes a linear regression tool. The bottom window allows you to graphically see your data points and helps you pick the time points in the linear regression tool for choosing the best initial velocity slope. This part of the analysis is very important for picking the correct initial velocity, so you must zoom in on your data. 
The default method when running your assay for the full two minutes is to click on auto scale. You may also zoom in on the numbers by clicking on the y-axis of the plot. This may be required for certain exercises in the lab or if you had stopped your assay earlier, which you will not do until after the lab practical. Now looking at the zoomed in graph closely, pick the time points that give you the steepest slope and change that setting in the rates tool on the top window. Enter the numbers on the keypad and then look at the graph to make sure that the best fit line has now been changed and is indeed steeper than the latter data points. You'll also see that the slope has changed as well. Notice how the units are change of absorbance per minute. Be sure to record this number just in case the printer doesn't work. To print the data, use the print screen function at the bottom of the screen as this will print out both windows on a single page. Due to the very low-tech nature of our spectrophotometer, the printing is going to take a while, so you either might want to prepare for the next sample or start cleaning up. So let's look at some optimal data and recap on the analysis steps. First, auto-scale the bottom plot. For optimal data, reliable data points can be obtained by using the first six time points, or 0 to 50 seconds. Once selected, you will look for two things that the initial absorbance is near the absorbance of the no enzyme control which you should have assayed earlier, and two, that the later time points are rising above the best fit line. Once you're done with analysis, exit the rates menu. If you're running another assay, hit save clear, but do not save your data. If you have completed all your assays, then quit the program. Since none of the reagents that you're using for the enzyme assay are toxic, you may dispose of these down the sink. Here's one more look on how to perform the enzyme assay. Make sure you're physically comfortable. Your ultimate goal is to be able to perform this assay individually, working quickly, accurately, and analyzing your data. Enjoy!